Anna Durai, who joined ISRO when ISRO was really at the start of its journey in 1982. And he stayed on in ISRO for 36 years. So as ISRO grew, he contributed and he saw. And that's why we thought it was best to request him to come and present. And to introduce him, we have done a short video. And then we will hand the mic to our Dr. Another way. I think as, as recognized by India, the, the space technology is a very powerful one and they make the investment. They've been very clever about their investment. They've always been trying to get ahead of the game and now they're doing it. They're actually doing their own thing. I think it's a, a very impressive mission um, given that it was executed by um, a, a government entity. It's like really, really impressive. And from a cost standpoint, impressive because it's being done by a government entity. Thank you, thank you colleagues, Dr. Anadurai. Welcome to this town hall with Deloitte Partners. Thank you for making time on a Sunday. Stage is all yours, sir. And we look forward to hearing your thoughts. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you and good afternoon to all. I think next, uh, the podium has like a lunch pad. It has put me in the lunch pad. So now I don't know. In getting launched from here. Let me spare uh, uh, some of my uh, thinkings today. Yeah. I want to use some of the PPTs putting uh, together. Can you put the, yeah. Uh, this may look like work in progress because I also was traveling until yesterday evening and uh, Niraj and myself, we are crisscrossing and how we can go, how we can put the things together. Uh, then I was thinking about uh, today when I am standing uh, the delights, uh, uh, this particular building here in front of you, uh, good number of uh, legates coming from German, the place which first time when I went outside India, I think German only went first time. Okay, that was a very, very cold at that time, minus 30, <laughs> minus 30. I think that's why my, <laughs> today also I am the jacking. Okay, now I was thinking about how am I here, okay, I've been taking the journey uh, down the line. So basically look at here, uh, Mr. Iswaran and uh, myself had an opportunity uh, to crisscross uh, in one of the startups, okay, and uh, happened to be an advisor in the, the startup which coming from the Samatha's uh, group of in, uh, institutions and uh, the companies were there. They made a new startup called Gencrest. Uh, in that, I am having a contribution at, as a technical advisor for that. This, this startup itself was uh, one of its count in the world. So I happen to be there. And that startup is basically in uh, Maharashtra, a uh, Bozawal district, where 50,000 acres of banana cultivation uh, happening, which is one of the largest in the world. And uh, taking uh, from the banana, uh, 
after the banana being uh, uh, harvested, the stem is uh, going a waste. So today, a farmer is struggling to get out of that, and uh, it is going a waste also. Then how it can be economically can be made uh, the, an idea has came, and that has been fructified. And today, this uh, around 87 acres land, uh, this uh, startup has come as a manufacturing institute. And to, to make that, basically, I had the idea of uh, how the business model can be done how it technically such a things can be made available and uh, in a nutshell it can give a three metric ton of fiber that is one uh, one such unit uh, if you make it and 50 such units will be installed in this uh, uh, startup is concerned to give a huge amount of uh, 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 fiber which will be an alternate for the cotton wool thing, something like that and beyond that it gives a nearly uh, 1.75 lakh uh, liters of uh, sap water which will be back to the earth as a nutrient a bio nutrient a, a, a green nutrient it can come and the sketcher will go a alternative for the fiber other things uh, for the uh, uh, acoustic panels starting from even even for the aeroplane frames inside things can be done, automobile it can be used, many, many such things possible. So this, this is the virtual plant I came out with that and that is the reason I am part and parcel of their technical team advising to come up. So then this talks about basically when we're talking about here, they had a, a system uh, wherein you will be able to extract the fiber uh, from the uh, banana. It can be with the without any chemical treatment. You can uh, use it as a fiber, but they didn't. Uh, but but the fiber is only one percent of the whole stem. Remaining ninety nine percent is going to be waste. How to how to manage for that? I think again we put forward uh, technical based viability of how how that each one of them can be used. Value addition can be given. So that accordingly uh, when we moved further, uh, this happened. But still, how what way a person worked thirty six years in Israel, How it landed there? Okay, that also looking at here, uh, the Samatha Group uh, uh, Chairman, uh, Mr. Prasoth Magarwal, uh, invited me uh, for something, a podium like this, okay, to talk with their uh, uh, top leaders in the corporate, uh, one, of, one of the annual meeting. Again, why he called me for that is, because he happened to see Mission Mangal, okay, and Mission Mangal, our Akshay Kumar enacted that, that, that character was inspired by Mahil Sami Anadari told, then he was searching for Mahil Sami Anadari, then I landed the place there. And that's how this happened there. So then, again, how I figured into the Mission Mangal, okay? That is story is basically, the Mission Mangal, I actually, I, I have given the idea to the, in, when you was in Isro, we can make a mission, uh, mission to the Mars because around that years, um, when, I, when I made this proposal, from that one and a half years there, there's one opportunity. Because you cannot launch mission to Mars every time. Once in 26 months, an opportunity comes. Again, this once in 26 months, every opportunity is not equally the same. But the opportunity which was aiming for 2013 is a one of the once in 50 years when you will get the opportunity. With a very, very minimal fuel, you can go. So that opportunity you are able to do, we can go to the Mars. But for that to go, uh, we should go with a minimum budget. Because India, uh, Israel's budget will first less. And uh, we are going out of the schedule. Uh, all of a sudden, we are putting a new proposal. So we told with the minimum, even no budget, with the minimum more schedule, with the available hardware putting together, with our own ingenious way of using our own PSL, which is very, very modest in the world, launch system is concerned, we can go. I think the proposal was given. I think that's that's the taken there. But how, yes, proposal was given, how the people accepted the proposal? Okay, the story unfolds because before that, two, two years before, three years before, we are launching the mission to the moon. I think that made a, it was a mission was 70th mission to go to the moon. Okay, good number of missions from US, uh, Russia, elsewhere, like Russia, China, Japan has gone. But this mission was a 70th mission to go to the moon. But still, this, this was the first ever mission to discover water on the surface of the moon. Okay, that, that means see, uh, budget also very, very less. So, with them, uh, uh, so we have done that. That means, yeah, uh, a victorious system we have done already. A successful mission has been done there. So that conference probably has given me uh, to this opportunity to take the mission Mars. But still, how ISRO has really gone to the moon? That's another story. So that you look at here around that time frame, my age was 45. And a good number of other missions called remote sensing, navigation, communication, metallurgical, many satellites uh, under the as a mission director, I had opportunity not only to make the mission launch, 
even after putting the machine there, there may be a small uh, issues can come. It may look like black and white for the general public, but there are some gray areas after launching also can happen because it goes, it, it's something is not working. But I had a speciality, acquired a speciality, which even the mission has gone 36 kilometer away at working. Uh, I had the knack of understanding what is the real problem, how we can overcome what that, how we can circumvent that. I think many things have happened there. Putting the things together, that means when you're making a new mission to the moon or Mars, you have to on, not only launching, and you must be able to, be able to cope up with understanding the new nitty gritties of that, be able to salvage the mission. So these things put together, probably it has given me an opportunity to uh, uh, handle the mission to moon to start with. So this story talks about uh, that. Yes, uh, morning we have to go and we have to ensure the cows are going out. And the Maila Swami Annadurai has had a hand in almost every remote sensing satellite made at ISRO. Born in a village in Tamil Nadu, he began his studies in the humblest of places. First two years, uh, we didn't have a permanent building called school. Okay, this is a makeshift uh, arrangement in a cow shed. Mor morning we have to go and we have to ensure the cows are going out and clean the uh, uh, cow dung and things like that. Mm. And we make the uh, classroom ready, so-called classroom ready. Anna Durey did his master's from a regional engineering college and joined ISRO in 1982. When he began, he says he could hardly speak in English. Yet, over the next 30 years, he became an expert in satellites, letting his actions speak louder than his words. But his moment of glory came in 2008. As project director of India's maiden moon mission Chandrayaan, he led 3,000 national and international scientists to victory. If you really want to do, if you have a real passion, I think here we have an opportunity. Okay, that is the basic message. Even moon is not uh, beyond our reach. With Deepa Balakrishnan in Bangalore, in New Delhi. Yeah, that, that's basically that summarizes why uh, from a yeah, group of missions, when for the societal needs, remote sensing, communication, metallurgical, we had the courage to go uh, beyond. Uh, the earth at that point of view. So that way, uh, this shows about a yeah, good number of satellites of various categories, satellite building point of view. Yes, a team we had an opportunity to work with. Yeah, leave it, leave it, leave it. Oh, leave it, leave it. Yeah, uh, th this basically it's, uh, talks about uh, how, how this happened. So again, uh, how uh, you have seen that, na? a boy which has had a very, very humble beginning uh, in a village like that, how he got into a place on the satellite building. This again the question comes. So we, I had an opportunity when I was job to joining this row, uh, whether you can go to the spacecraft building or the computers in the software side. I had an opportunity to look for that and I had an opportunity, which one you want to take? I had an opportunity to take an option itself. Still how that option came, it comes like this. Uh, I think the few months after my joining of ISRO, uh, I put forward an idea because that time ISRO was not making a satellite. ISRO was, uh, satellites were made elsewhere launch was done elsewhere, our thing is to operate the satellites. That was the original concept. But still, I thought one day or other we have to make a satellite. To make the satellite before making it in a hardware form, why can't we try in a software form? That means software satellite simulator, is it possible to build? Why can't we do? I think put forward an idea. And the Professor Rao, um, uh, you, who was the director of the ISRO Satellite Center at that time, from the position where I retired subsequently, uh, after 40 years later, uh, he told me, yes, idea is good. But if you are ready to take the responsibility, why can't you take it and do? That's what we told. So then I took it, then only I understood the real seriousness of the problem. That calls for understanding the whole gamut of what is how the systems work, interplay of various systems, and the electronic system after putting it into orbit, how it will behave, how the inter systems also we have to simulate in mathematical model, functional model, putting the things together in a software form. So this this really took for nearly four years. But Believe me, today, such a system works in a very, very elaborate way. Today, our mission to Mangal, mission to Mamoon, we are doing. Such a simulator, it helps us in a very, very big way. So that before cutting the system, before metal cutting starts, this enables us to do a lot of iterations and do that way. So that way, I think initial, uh, this type, particular time, one side, yes, I had a good handle about the software. Another side, a good handle about understanding about what the satellite to build. 
and what sort of things can be arrived at. So that that enabled me to give an option when the uh, uh, organization asked whether you want to go to software or the spacecraft side, I think I took the software uh, spacecraft side and that moved that way. So then how all the whole thing started after joining ISRO only, okay, that ISRO was something like this the time when I joined. Okay, very, very rudimentary, making very, very small uh, the satellites, very uh, the small uh, rockets and doing. And uh, uh, this uh, young boy is none other than Dr. Kalam. Okay, he retired uh, as a president of uh, India. Okay, and uh, this, this is, this is, this is, this is the basic uh, thing happened. But still, when such a thing is there, how I joined this row? Okay, that, that's another story. So when the career option was coming, as yes, Sinaraj told, 1982, uh, I could have gone to an electronics engineer, being a postgraduate, I gone to electronics side, I go to the software side, but I took the space because as I told, it has given option for both electronics and software, let us try. I think that is one of the thing. Another thing is, in my age, from younger age, if you are able to join a system which is just budding, I will be a part and parcel of that system when it grows. So the, you, your individual growth as well as organization growth, if you are able to connect it, that gives a sense of accomplishment beyond the money. I think that is that is some of it has gone there. That how it has gone, I will not go to fast forward. We have run through another 20, uh, 25 years. So instead of that, I will just fast forward. So this is my second standard when I did so that idea of it, whatever I told that happened is uh, in, the, in my village, there is a big lake. That lake in the summer it opens for the clay. In the clay, we have to set the ties. So everyone did the ties of different type. But I took a tie, but it's not a tie, a concept called the moon. On the moon, giving a national flag, putting as if an Indian is standing on the pole of the moon. Okay. To be frank, none of the people really thought about putting a man on the poles. Okay. Only our Chandrayaan after 2008, today back to the moon. That's all the whole of world is looking for. Back to the moon is putting the system onto the pole. But whole Armstrong, everybody landed near the Mediterranean region there. But nobody thought about that. So I think that's what happened there. So that looking at that concept, looking at the difference, looking at the innovation, thinking possibly the school teacher gave me a pencil yeah, as, a, as a compliment for that thing. I think that is the one which has taken all the way to me uh, to get the Badmasri Award, one of the nation's prestigious awards subsequently, when our mission to the moon or Mars has gone. So basic uh, thing, it started from the, uh, that point of view. That's what I used to think about that way. So now, yes, this has happened. Now you look at here the same way. Uh, your ISRO also, when it joined, it was like that. But today, you look at here, one of the best world-class infrastructure available uh, within ISRO which has grown from 1960 exponential growth when you look at here it has gone very very much big way that real kink has happened after our chandrayaan mission you look at here a lot more happened but when the baking the chandrayaan mission itself we had partner good number of foreign institutions also subsequently not only satellites are being made here not only satellites are launched from here the satellites being done for the outside even european nations to communicate satellites were done and the launching were a good number of satellites. To the date, around 367 satellites were launched for the foreign countries from PSLV, uh, from Sirigiri Kota has happened. Uh, now recently, very recently also, that one web, which is coming for the uh, SpaceX Starlink and opponent, or the uh, Airtel's um, uh, one web configuration, 36 satellites were launched there. And another few months, uh, few weeks from now, another 36 satellite launch also going to happen. So like that, yeah, very, very yeah, steep exponential uh, growth for the organization also happened there. So now having done that, now we don't want lag behind. Because this has to continue. This has to keep going. And uh, this uh, culture also to be percolated beyond uh, ISRO. I think other industries also have to come. I think that's how Prime Minister has given the mandate. And we have taken some baby steps. And that is coming out. Uh, but this whatever I tell, to telling is basically nearly seven, eight years back. Whatever I brought, uh, by the time I became the satellite center director, I brought nearly 500 industries uh, people uh, to this uh, center and showcasing what today's infrastructure we have and we have an extra capacity available, extra volumes available. Indian industries, if you're ready to do, they can join together. We are ready to handhold them to make the systems, to make the satellites, so that end-to-end -end capabilities, they can shift to that. I think that's how we have given. And that confidence, whatever has I given seven, eight years back, is now fructifying as a ISRO, India space policy getting privatized for the uh, uh, thing also is keep happening there. Just I will go down for the few minutes.
ISRO Satellite Center, ISAC, is the lead center for design, development, and integration of communication, remote sensing, navigation, scientific, and small satellites. These satellites have been providing services in the area of communication, earth observation, navigation, meteorology, space science, including interplanetary missions. ISAC is equipped well-equipped laboratories, electronics and mechanical fabrication facilities, package level as well as spacecraft level environmental test facilities, along with three clean rooms of one lakh class for spacecraft assembling, integration and testing. ISAC has realized till now more than 90 spacecraft out of which more than 40 spacecraft are presently in operation and providing valuable services for various applications. The ISRO Satellite Integration and Test Establishment, ISITE, an extension of ISAC, was conceived in the year 2000 as a facility to augment the satellite building capacity of ISAC. This facility is about 7 kilometers away from ISAC, Bangalore, which is replete with all facilities for rolling out a satellite right from the elemental and subsystem stage to assembly, integration, and testing, all in one campus, making it unique and only one of its kind in the world. As of now, all of ISRO's high power communication satellites, navigation, and meteorological satellites are built and tested here. ISAC campus in the sprawling 110 acres land at Marathali, Bengaluru, today boasts of more than 15 technical facilities like compact antenna test facility, assembly integration and test facility, 6.5 meter thermovac chamber, vibration test facility, acoustic test facility, and avionics production facility, providing platform for avionics fabrication and testing by industry partners. This production facility at iSight houses extensive fabrication and testing labs for vendors apart from four thermovacuum facilities, four numbers of climatic chambers and a 3.5 ton vibration shaker for environmental testing of all the packages and subsystems realized. The compact antenna test facility at iSight is primarily used for spacecraft level antenna and payload characterization. iSight has two clean rooms, namely AIT-1 in the AIT complex and the other AIT-2 in the space park. Both clean rooms are well connected with roadways for easy and safe transportation of spacecraft and its hardware. These clean rooms are of 1 lakh class with nearly 1,850 square meter working area. Both clean rooms are well connected with other test facilities for testing of spacecraft during various phases of realization. Both the clean rooms are provided with change room, air shower, ESD flooring, lighting, overhead EOT cranes, dedicated seismic platform for CG and MI instruments, zero-G fixture, etc. These clean rooms support AIT of spacecraft up to 6-ton class. iSight also has environmental test facilities such as a large 6.5-meter diameter thermovac chamber for conducting thermal vacuum performance tests and a 29-ton shaker that can be used for conducting vibration tests and acoustic test facility with reverberation chamber to conduct acoustic tests on spacecraft. Space Park, spread across 25 acres area within eyesight, houses all the facilities for satellite building and testing by the industry partners in order to build the capacity of satellite building. The space park presently houses assembly integration and test facility, high-density interconnect facility, 
solar panel and battery labs along with required services. A high-density interconnect HDI facility aimed at realizing space-grade PCBs with fine line and fine spacing is housed in the space park. Further, six more new facilities are under various stages of construction and five new facilities are under planning. An exclusive building to house the mechanical system activities, a facility for space-qualified solar panel, battery fabrication and testing, and a flight hardware storage facility will be ready shortly. Heat pipe development facility, which will augment heat pipe throughput, is due to be operational. Addition of one more dynamic test facility, new compact antenna test facility, and extension to the present clean room of AIT-1 are also on the anvil. These facilities, when fully ready, will be able to deliver hardware in tune with all satellite requirements to create a strong supply chain management. Further, with all the clean rooms at ISAC and iSight, ISAC will be able to integrate more than 20 satellites at a time. In ISAC's quest to forge ahead with its industrial partners, all these facilities are available to the industry for spacecraft building and testing. ISRO has envisaged the load of building 15 to 18 satellites per year with active involvement of Indian industries. Apart from building infrastructure, ISAC also has systematically encouraged industries to go hand-in-hand in, hand in building satellites thereby ensuring a conducive ecosystem for industries to build satellites in India. ISAC is planning to involve industry partners in a big way and the industry can play a vital role to build more and more satellites. This collaborative approach will lead to win-win situation for ISRO and its industry partners to climb newer heights and be a part of fulfilling the emerging demands of both national and global needs. Yeah, that is while uh, developing the vendors uh, beyond ISRO can do private industry. Now we have to source the human resource also. Now ISRO also now post our Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, which will graduate out uh, every year good number of uh, uh, engineers and scientists for that. And beyond that, I think now today I am, I think, embarked into a, another thing, maybe another two minutes of video, uh, wherein the students learn from the school. You have seen my humble beginning in the school, but somehow uh, accidentally or some other I would have studied. But today by design, is it possible to cultivate the, uh, the ecosystem uh, more like how we make the satellites, how the colleges, is it possible to do that? I think with the American India Foundation, uh, I am into this uh, journey today. American India Foundation has been implementing its flagship program, Digital Equalizer, from the year 2008 in Tamil Nadu. At present, we are reaching out to 405 schools, 1,37,850 students and 3,556 teachers. STEM Innovation Learning Centre This is the country's first centre with unique facility catering to the needs of the students and teachers with a value of INR 20 lakhs. This centre will be a one-stop solution for STEM among students and teachers. The silk setup is done under the scheme Vanavil Mandram at the Government Higher Secondary School MMDA Colony. The school will be supported for three years by American India Foundation. Technology Corner for Teachers It accommodates a smart lab setup with an internet connection to facilitate teachers to conduct techno-pedagogy enabled classes for their students as well as receive training on the digital equalizer way of teaching that is DWOT, a unique method developed by AIF to address all types of learners in the classroom. Science and math models and exhibits displayed are aligned with the state syllabus enlightening and engaging the young minds.
Innovation Corner for Students. It is the center's art which introduces students to a transdisciplinary learning approach through robotics, AI, space technology kits and the STEM incubation workstation. It creates curiosity in advanced STEM courses while also assisting them in developing their innovative ideas into prototypes, creating a platform to take part in state, national or international level competitions. Apart from this, the students will get technical guidance in designing their prototypes from experts and also guidance for their careers in space technology and STEM areas. Studio Setup Assist teachers in creating high-quality DE edu reels, an idea conceptualized to bring about a revolution in education by creating reels about the subject's important definitions and basic concepts as well as for exams such as NEET and NMMS. Drone Satellite Launch Vehicle DSLV Mission In order to create a platform for students to learn about drone and aviation technology, AIF flagship program, Digital Equalizer has introduced a drone satellite launch vehicle, DSLV Mission, in which 200 students from 12 schools were selected and are being trained to assemble a drone and PICO satellite which will be launched. This is the first such mission being done in Tamil Nadu under the mentorship of the the Moon Man of India, Badmastri, Dr. Mailsami Annadurai, former director ISRO, vice president of Tamil Nadu State Council for Science and Technology. Yeah, that means the ecosystem is end to end. Starting from the school, I think up to the vendor development, I think the ecosystem is a sustainable thing. So, mission to moon and mission to Mars could not be an isolated success. Okay, that is the idea is, is it possible to take that degree and keep making it a systematic way. While doing it, yes, within ISRO also there is a lesson to learn. Now you look at here the spread over north and south and east to west west. We have a good number of uh, ISRO centers that makes various systems that comes to the Sri Kota to be launched with the host of uh, uh, class of uh, launch vehicles available there. But with this, now the requirement is coming, the re their possibility of uh, launch on demand and good number of small satellite launch also is coming and it's now we're looking at uh, talking about 4G to 5G keep coming anywhere to anywhere anything to anything connectivity will come where the satellites are going to play a major role there when that happens satellites will be launched will be in a few thousands not even few tens okay when that happens it calls for a major correction within the organization that is also venturing into that and that is basically a good number of the small launch vehicles that means uh, tomorrow i have to launch today i should be ready Satellites also to be ready there. So that cannot come from across India to do that. Now we are identifying a place called Kulasagara Patinam. From uh, in and around that place, possibility of putting a space for that means to make the, all the satellite systems ready, launch vehicle systems ready, and uh, some requirement is coming. I think we are able to launch because once you have few thousand satellites are going around that's being operational, I know someday or other, every day one satellite or two going it even possible. When that comes, definitely for operationalization to continue to point of view, to maintain the constellation, definitely we have to make uh, 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 launching the satellites and the frequent requirements will come there. So to make that, definitely length and breadth of India, we cannot keep moving around with so much of logistics not possible. So what all I told, the end-to-end -end capability, whatever I've been building here in Bangalore, I think with the lesson to learn, and what all we have done across India, and what is the new young minds are coming here, putting together, there is a cluster is trying to be formed under in and around Kulas Agarapatinam, wherein the small launch vehicles, small satellites will be made ready to go. I think that way, an end-to-end -end capability is being thought about, and it is soon, I think it's going to happen there. So while we're talking about things here, I think I do write uh, in uh, uh, columns in the uh, our vernacular language and that goes across India and then I also write books also. Okay, I've written the books to, to the date around uh, seven books we have written uh, from my journey. What all I told now the last 20 minutes, I think it has gone when the seven books in various was it comes. So that people get a confidence. It is my while Sami and other is not an isolated success. Similarly, many people can be made in this uh, part, part of the world that's happening there. And uh, if you happen to see the uh, our Bangalore lounge, you can see by some of my books at the display also.
okay in the not in the uh, in the lounge library it is it is there yeah so that means uh, creating a technology uh, advanced country uh, we require innovation uh, teamwork partnership and collaboration so let us move forward towards this i think this i tell to the school children to this podium one and the same alone we can do so little but together we can do so much thank you thank you thank you very much thank you thank you so much dr anadurai please please have a seat yeah. so dr anadurai you talked a lot about the achievements that we have made and really what this group is certainly also interested in is the mindset yeah. despite the constraints the challenges the fact that the world was not expecting us to do it yeah, yeah. i'm sure you are rao was not expecting you to come out with that idea of doing a software simulated yeah. uh, you know thing so i just want to ask you to articulate where does the motivation for these thoughts comes from and the courage okay. as well to approach a person who was 40 years your senior and as a young engineer go and say to him an idea why did that guy not throw you out of the room so please help us educate because these are the pearls that we want to unearth yeah, yeah. because these things colleagues are happening in india all the time over to you yeah i think it's a, uh, it's a predominantly driven by my upbringing okay i i i i, I have given a sample of what is my village like uh, in the village when you have to learn swimming this open well somebody will push you inside you have to learn you have no other go because you have to that time for your survival you are coming but in the process you are you have learned the swimming this is how i learned my swimming uh, is concerned there's a bringing and again you look at here the classrooms were not there classrooms we made it you know you know you have seen that because uh, that's how we made it so that means uh, we are not worried where upbringing is concerned not looking at what you deprived of rather than make use of what's available to you the best use of it and to do it a better than thing and uh, while doing it my father always used to tell that with the pencil when i went he asked me what's next okay he was not satisfied with what i have taken he he has taken his granted he was looking for me what next i do i didn't run through that in schools i used to run through that another one hour but on pencil how to purpose really has come okay that every step that that means uh, don't think about your deprivation and how you can do better day by day i think that is the one which has uh, pushed me so when, when i joined isro also i joined with a lot of dreams that when i am looking at this row isro was not like that you would have seen that photos so then i thought something you should do better what i can do better so i, I thrown an idea Uh, that idea was like uh, cutting into a pool only but luckily to the best of my thing like my father next to my father professor ruyarav also is taken it very very positively and he is thrown up a challenge to me yeah. again that is the one which has really really triggered uh, it has taken me and dr anadurai when we look at isro it's always been ridiculed by the media especially outside our country Are we being a poor country? Does yes, India yes. really need a space program? And of course, it's a government agency. There are demands on the government budgets. Again, the courage, motivation when you face all those barbs, and you have—it's not like, of course, Mangalyaan was the first attempt, and we were the first country which put on a mission in the Mars orbit in the first attempt itself. But there have been failures as well. Yeah. so i am sure isro has come under a lot of pressure in terms of budgetary asks etc so how has this fed into the culture of innovation within isro and if you can in the light of i mean today it's a different world yeah, yeah. but when you were doing the soft uh, the satellite software simulator for example we are talking about mid 80s yeah yeah so any challenges the learning and learning during that time if you can just shed some light on that and also the challenges from the outside world that you were facing at that time that would be very helpful yeah it's really really challenging thing only because uh, when when uh, uh, the man landing on the moon 50th year when celebrating that time only india's cumulative isro budget 
across the annual budget of NASA. Okay, that, that, that until now, now now it is slight increases there. But initially, definitely budget point of view, we had the uh, tough time, and uh, uh, but but initially before we were Mangal our mission uh, Chandrayaan, our missions are driven basically for societal needs. Okay, uh, the satellite program has come for how education can be reached to the rural area and the remote sensing came came how we can help for the farmers that way so first industrial two industrial revolution in india could not garner it but how in the to leapfrog that how space technology can be used from the farmers to education to healthcare i think that is how we have uh, done that and that way i think governments were able to support enough uh, to we are able to showcase to the common man the space can be helped there I think that's how really we have done that. Having done that, then only we ventured for the with extra uh, mile, extra mile only the mission to the moon or Mars has come. Otherwise, to be frank, uh, I am more than 60 satellites I had the opportunity to work with. Only the two missions only, my name came out. Uh, that did help for the media point of view. Uh, otherwise, uh, I think uh, we have done reasonably well to convince the policy makers uh, the missions meant for the common man. And uh, our uh, technologies, whatever we have obtained to take to the people is second to none. Though our salaries were second to everybody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's I think on that point, isn't ISRO the right and fertile poaching ground for every space agency in the world? And still you continue to stick around ISRO. So is it just patriotism? Is it just doing it for Indian good? And if you can kind of say a few words. I think this is more for the Indian audience uh, in the room. Yeah, it, it's really, really basically many, many places people ask. I'm, I'm not telling like that also. Many places when the offer came also I told, it's a purely a sense of gratitude. Okay, a person like me, when he's sitting today, uh, the where, where I was there uh, 50 years back, when I look back, I think this nation has given me everything. Okay, so the sense of gratitude, nothing else. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for that, uh, Dr. Anadurai. Thank you so much. Dr. Anadurai, switching over to Chandrayaan 1 mission. So it was our first mission. And on the day prior to the launch, there was a fuel leak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on the day of the launch, the weather was inclement. Still, you go, went ahead and did the launch. So just tell us about, I mean, as you said, right, there is only that much that the media and the general public knows what went in those 24, 48 hours and how did you, is it like, you know, because in our country there is this saying, you see all this crowd and traffic, etc. There is a saying in Hindi, it says Ram Bharose, right? The country is run by the Lord. That's why the country runs, right? So did you kind of invoke the Lord and just launch it? Or was it anything more than that? No, no, it is, it is definitely, definitely more than that. Because <laughs> the mission such as that. <laughs> because we, we, cannot, we cannot rely too much on that. And uh, as, uh, so basically look at there, uh, our launch vehicles are uh, rainproof. Okay. Basically the satellite is inside. The satellite is fully covered by the head shield. And uh, if any rain, nothing, nothing is going to happen there. That's one thing. But notwithstanding that, uh, when when we are launching, we also sent the weather balloons and suit to the high altitude to have any charged clouds are there. Okay, into the charged clouds, we are not supposed to launch. That is our thing. So we have seen to that it is it was not there. Okay, the, basically that, that is the thing. Uh, second thing is fuel leak. Yes, it was the problem. But we have identified the fuel leak uh, uh, point of view. That's more of a ground system issue. From ground, we have to pump the fuel and the ground system is an issue. So that I think what we have done is drained and we have uh, pumped it slightly more. But it so happened we have pumped it slightly more. But we have taken a, uh, our overall calculation. We have enough margins in the system. Even the additional fuel will help rather than uh, the point of view. We allowed it. That way, I think it is a, uh, I cannot tell it is a really a risk. But it so happened uh, uh, when we checked that the climatic conditions, everything was okay. Because you have to launch on the, uh, that day, 2008, October 22nd, 622, you have to launch, 622, you have to launch. Excellent. Okay, if you are not launching, you have to wait for uh, some other day. Uh, some other day would have done that. Uh, but yeah. but uh, this time was okay. Uh, not looking any astrology, looking for any uh, panjanga. <laughs> it is a purely, it is scientifically, it is a, a same thing. No, thank you so much. 
Ameteshwar, I left my clicker. Can you just go to the next slide? So, when we talk about the mission to Mars, we talked about gravity at the movie that was made, Mangalyan being uh, 74 uh, million dollars. I mean, you would already done Chandrayaan. There, there was no pressing need for us to stick our neck out yeah, 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 yeah. when we had no budget. Correct. Right. When the window was so small, 15 yeah. months is what you mentioned, Correct. I recall. Yeah, 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 yeah. No budget, no need. The window was so small. And yet the belief that we could stick our necks out and pursue this, right? What is what is the motivation to do all these things? Why, why do it at all? I mean, yeah, there were no enabling factors. No, I think you would have seen my presentation. When we are coming up exponentially, we need a signature mission. We need a signature mission to show we are ready to graduate to the next level in a big way. Okay, definitely, definitely we have to see. But at the time I was a program director of the missions, I thought we, we can do much more than what we are capable. And infrastructure also is extra available. For that, definitely you need a signature mission. But signature mission for that purpose, definitely I cannot ask a good amount of budget. Uh, so uh, in that process, as you have seen the mission Mangal movie, uh, we have an extra hardware available. And putting the things together with our own manpower, existing manpower, uh, we told we can make a mission. And this opportunity is a very good opportunity. 2013, November 5th launch is the best opportunity to reach the Mars and subsequent year 2014. So we, we should not lose this opportunity and uh, connect these two things. We need a signature mission. So going to the Mars and if we succeed, we are going to make history because never ever anybody succeeded first attempt at that time. Even the budgets were by but uh, they succeeded only in their fifth attempt. Yeah. Russia succeeded only in ninth attempt. Yeah. Japan, China had to succeed. At that time, if we succeed, we are going to make a history. So it's really about really, making really, a mark really, 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 really uh, in there. So colleagues, uh, when the team conceived the mission, they basically chose the PSLV satellite to launch it. And of course, there was a limitation on amount of load yeah. that that satellite would carry. And as you know, when satellites are launched, the biggest load is the fuel load. At the closest point, Mars and Earth are around 55 million kilometers away. But the PSLV satellite was not cap capable of carrying the fuel load. So what did the team do? The team took an unconventional 690 million kilometers route to reach Mars because that was considered fuel efficient. Fuel efficient, yeah. I mean, 55 million kilometers straight line distance versus 690 million kilometers distance that you travel and it was considered space efficient. So if we can go to the next slide. Yeah. Help us explain. <laughs> I mean, 10 months of journey and you sitting here, of course, it's a signature mission, but look at the number of things that you did. So where does this thinking come from? And please, can you elaborate a little bit on what these circles are and, and, and what happened? Yeah. And all the innovation that was going behind the scenes in respect of choosing the 690 million kilometer path versus the straight line path? Yeah, the first and foremost, uh, this is uh, uh, an incremental effort over Chandraya. Okay, uh, now you, you replace uh, uh, Mars to Moon. Okay, uh, we have done a similar thing, the same PSLV uh, with the same 1350 kg of uh, system when you're taking and with the propellant, uh, is a PSLV was putting only around 23,000 kilometer. So when, when, but now what is happening is something called slings uh, sort of effect, you, which you make use of your gravity of the mother planet as well as uh, the, your own incremental velocity. So what we have done, even the mission uh, uh, Chandrayaan also, whenever it comes close to the perigee, it's a it comes higher speed. So you give initial kick, that takes you to all the way to next orbit. 
okay so when it comes here another velocity that so that means the gravity pull as well as this both things you keep on incrementally keep improving this okay and eventually we'll able to do that so that's what we have done for the uh, chandrayaan mission so when coming to uh, the uh, uh, mission mangal we have selected different way we have done selected everything remains same the last one is we'll take away from the gravity of the earth and it will be captured by the gravity of the sun okay now you look at here uh, the billions and billions of trillions and trillions of kilometer earth is going around nobody giving a fuel okay it is purely the sun's gravity around that is going so our mission mangal for 9 months will go will travel with the sun's gravity sun's gravity we pulling it there so so when we are doing it our calculation is and direction velocity timing of the mangalyaan is such that when it's acquired by the sun and it's keep moving afterwards it will go and rend over the mission mars 9 months later so your the way in which you calculated and put the velocity increment the direction you kept time you kept should be such that sun will take care you need not to send the fuel sun will take care its own gravity it comes when it comes it just goes over 500 km above the earth's moon our mars so that time automatically you raise a mission such that it reduces the velocity to a few hundred meters with the available fuel so that will acquire around the mars so the whole thing is how to how you understand the whole the system is behaving how you can interplay your system towards that i think that's what we have done so when we did like that i think not only we did we are the first people to do that and we ensured uh, this is uh, when prime minister of india standing behind me i think when we made that mission it's a really really made a Uh, that uh, historic uh, the success when we made it so it is only the interplay of that with an incremental effort over what we have done in uh, mission mars moon so colleagues uh, just to summarize the straight line required the fueling to happen constantly the fuel burn would have happened constantly here what was being done was the fuel was being used only to power it to the right trajectory the rest of the things were all done by lord as 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 as, <laughs> I, as, as i as i call it and then when they fired it when it was ready to be in the marishian orbit at that time they slowed they burnt fuel to slow it down so that it could be captured in that elliptical orbit in which it was designed to go around for a period of 6 months 9 months yeah 9 months having said that uh, it was a gross under calculation i guess uh, in some sense it yeah on service can i can i put a video yes it serviced for almost 8 years yeah 6 i uh, said so 6 months you wanted to survey but 7 7 and a half yeah. months yeah can i put this video yeah this this basically it explains what does that mean okay so nominally with one spin we cannot throw that so that's what uh, uh, this happening yeah this is again the simulation whatever i told but actually we did that yeah actually even to mission to moon also we, we went same similar way only but only thing is the last one we go slightly more velocity than what we are ah, yeah at this point of time mars earth our satellite all three are under the influence of sun this is the nine month journey so that's why it is not here whatever we told so we we have taken the big path like this not going directly here we are directly going you have to spend more energy so this uh, as per the simulation where we are supposed to be where are we keep on watching and any any problem you have to correct it so that that didn't happen so when when it comes this the whole journey is a nine month journey so fast forward here i simulation point of view yeah when it comes just 500 km above the ah uh, yeah there one small uh, decrement in the velocity that occurs so this is the whole of all that <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Thank you. Dr. Anandurai, for patiently ex- uh, the entire thing. Of course, we spent a lot of time looking through for such a video from the internet. 
<laughs> we couldn't find it to be honest. <laughs> That's why I put that image. Uh, but my last question to you and then we open up to the audience. You talked about and showed us a very elaborate video on how ISRO is encouraging private sector participation. And the whole idea there is ISRO has built launch facilities, they built the fabrication labs. The Mangalyan mission was largely indigenous in terms of having a put in place component manufacturers, the whole supply chain that is there. And having done that in 2020, India basically said we have limited resources from a budgetary perspective. Whatever has been built can be open source for private participation, for private parties to come in and not worry about building their own launch pads, for example, or duplicating the infrastructure facilities that are there. And they could basically then leverage that. And I'm glad to report that three months back, I think the first private spacecraft was launched under this initiative uh, uh, through this uh, public private partnership, as, as we may call it. So Dr. Anadurai, space has been demystified. Yes. When we launched satellites, I would say three decades back, it used to open newer transponders, newer, uh, you know, the additional precious bandwidth that became available, it opened space for critical mission applications, be it, uh, you know, weather, yeah. be it uh, for the purposes of the defense, etc. But now it's getting truly commoditized. Yeah, yeah. So over the next few years, what can we expect? Could we expect that anything to do with space transponder capacity or otherwise from an application perspective, could we expect that that would become truly democratized? Just like internet in some senses today uh, or access to electricity is getting democratized in India, could we expect something of those side? And what could it give birth to from India for the world? Any thoughts you have there, sir? And then we will open to Q&A from the audience. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's what, uh, in, a, in a way, we feel. Because basically, now you're talking about the 5G and other things. So not only that, everybody to everybody connectivity, anything to anything connectivity, everything to everything connectivity that comes. So that means anywhere to anywhere connectivity also called for. So when that thing is really called for, this conventional way of connectivity will not able to do that. So that means uh, space is the only way. The whole globe can be connected. So that way, uh, that's how I'm told, uh, the future will be the smaller, the smarter, and huge number of larger number of satellites launch. That's that's going to be a reality. So already during a COVID, uh, actually nearly more than 30,000, 30 percent of the satellites which are launched all are 60 years. This COVID period, 30 percent of that satellite is launched. So that's what's going to come is another huge. Uh, that, that means for the connectivity point alone, I expect a few thousands of satellites across. And, uh, and uh, already you know that um, uh, Iran Musk is doing that. Similar thing is uh, OneWeb is in a place. Uh, OneWeb's uh, the uh, good number of satellites also being launched by uh, uh, India, and India is having a 50% shareholder on that. So that way, uh, so I think this Dr. Anadurai, yeah, yeah. when it comes to Diwali in a few years' time, yeah, yeah, yeah. we wouldn't be needing to rock, uh, launch rockets uh, and the firecrackers <laughs> on our own. <laughs> We could just expect ISRO to launch, you know, satellites for all of India and it will save a lot of environmental pollution as well, I guess. No, of course, the pollution is another thing. So that, that opens it up now, like it's more like our, uh, uh, the police was not for the traffic control originally. But now most of the police <laughs> is using for the traffic control, the Bangalore. So that is a, that is a similar thing. Uh, another domain, you previously used to make the launch vehicle, you make the satellites, you make the systems and launch it, operate it. But now beyond that, now already, of course, ISRO also is uh, into that. So whereas we have to not only monitor whether a satellite is working, or whether your satellite is in danger with somebody else's satellite in the next one week. I yeah. think that's a weekly prediction is going on, yeah. like weather prediction. Now that is a part and parcel of uh, any uh, space wearing nations thing. Absolutely. So that is also it's happening and towards that good number of technologies, how the plastic now take it out, how the plastic avoid to do that. So similar technology also <laughs> is keep uh, pouring in. Uh, so that end of the life, every satellite is supposed to uh, make uh, way for other satellites. Sure. And uh, yeah. existing carpages to be collected, that is also the machines are in place. So that is another domain is keep coming. 
So the huge number of satellites we cannot avoid. Yeah. But uh, it's it's fallbacks also we have to be ready with. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Anudurai, yeah. for taking my questions, and I open up to the audience, uh, Nikolai. Yeah. Uh, through a space technology. Yeah, that's true. You're doing something in space to solve these. Yeah, 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 yeah. So one is already I told uh, 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 the education point of view. So we, we told that he told the number of how many scient how many engineers coming out itself we showed. So that means how many that many graduates are coming. So you think about the in the schools, huge number of classrooms called upon. We can provide the classrooms, but all the quality education, quality teachers in every classroom is very tough situation. Okay, to make that, I think space can play a major role. So already I am into the mission. I am into the mission personally. Uh, we have the, uh, uh, the a channel called Kalvi Channel. So wherein we are telling about uh, many governments are giving every will every home a free TV they are giving. Now we are telling about every classroom let TVs reach there, and we have the qualified, fully trained teachers will be from one centralized place will take the class. Okay, so that is the that is the thing. I feel uh, personally, it's really required because the huge country, huge uh, uh, number of uh, youngsters are coming. Uh, uh, there need to be given the opportunities of uh, equal opportunity for the thing. That's why it's called digital equalizer. Digital equalizer is a program in which I am also mentoring the American Indian Foundation. So where the connectivity of the satellites will help. Where today it goes with the internet with the, where the fiber is going on. So fiber is not reaching everywhere, e even India. So that the satellites will help in a big way. So there is a one thing. A similar thing for the uh, our own fisherman, uh, like that many many things also we are doing it. Basically, Indian space program is driven by the societal needs. These are all only signature mission to show as what what we are. That's all. Like our Diwali, Diwali once in a year we are celebrating. But Diwali is not the only thing. So we have to livelihood, we have to see the remaining 364 days. So that is the, these missions are like that, yeah. Just to give a perspective when, you know, he talks about education, number of the children will have less than a dollar a day in terms of subsistence. One dollar a day. So otherwise you may think, what's the big deal? But one dollar a day is what they may be or their families may be earning one or two dollars a day. That's it. All right, so <clears throat> just that perspective is important. But thank you, thank you, Dr. Anadurai. Just was thinking that as you, you know, this this mission in terms of Mangal or Chandrayaan, for example, there would have been some materials, there would have been some things which are expensive, which are costly. Was there anything that was done from an innovation perspective to change the material? Because there is a certain base level of material that has to go into a satellite. Correct. But you would have had to change some of that because if you you know, imported the same material, then the 74 million wouldn't have done. Correct. Maybe were there some examples of what is rooted to uh, from an innovation perspective? Yeah, we, we know that, you know, that for example, when you are going that uh, uh, this uh, w w w between Chandrayaan and Mangalyaan, one of the major changes is we have to carry a bigger antenna because this uh, distance is very far. When the distance is far, it's square of the distance. Uh, complexity of the uh, communication changes uh, accordingly the antenna has to be in a bigger size but antenna has to be bigger size in a conventional any imported systems one is heavy another one is uh, time also not available so we have to go indigenous way so we, we went with the lightweight composite materials carbon carbon materials but basically it is uh, the raw material is you know coconut shell coconut shell is a burnt that carbon that carbon is a basically material raw material so we could we could do it here. One is a lightweight, indigenous, make it faster. I think that we have, we have done that way. So that way, uh, where we are driven to the wall, uh, uh, definitely because that is the time. Time is not available. Even you want to import, uh, procedures are different. Government of India, the procedures you cannot import. Then make it and do. So it has to be available hardware. Then the other things we should do. I think that's what we have gone through that. And. 
it was also used as a sail in some sense. Right? Yeah, to, yeah, 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 correct. To, yeah. To basically, you have to maneuver. Well, basically, what is happening is the whole simulation, uh, it tells every instant where the satellite is. If not there, uh, that's how, even, even, even though I told very simple words, even the configuration is new. The configuration is with the minimum fuel to go, uh, even the doesn't mean the, uh, the space is not, doesn't mean nothing is there. Space also, we have something called solar wind is happening. So, that can be used like a sail and end route. So, during nine months, basically as we told uh, that uh, we used to articulate. We used to articulate that such that uh, we maintained the path, maintained the velocity, maintained the uh, every three foot time and we have done that also. But this is a, uh, the lightweight system is also us. So, that way look at here, uh, the way in which we have gone is uh, uh, many of my NASA friends will tell this Indian way of gone. They used to tell because uh, just for jovial I will tell you, uh, uh, I've got by the time I picked up a lot, good number of friends from that side. Uh, from when we are reaching Mission Moon also. So, when the Mission Mangal, they sent, uh, they, they looked at, uh, when I presented, they were there, uh, they are, are, are really serious, the mission, because no hardware was there, only my simulation was running. Without hardware, uh, assembled, how you are doing uh, the question, but uh, when the mission was launched, one week before the mission, uh, that launch, uh, I got a two liter jar of uh, peanuts, they sent to me. And the story goes like this. Uh, it looks uh, first mission they failed, second mission failed, third mission failed, fourth mission failed. They were all looking for what is the problem, okay. Then my counterpart there, he, he thought uh, uh, everything was okay, but why they are failing? But uh, uh, the what's, what is happening is it takes slightly more time to there. So, they, he, during that time people uh, in the control center, they get somewhat relaxed. So, somebody would take beer or uh, smokes or something like that, some relaxed to there. there. So, we, we are not yes uh, tense, yes uh, aggressive, yes attentive, yes forecast uh, during the launch day. To every, to every, everybody bring on board, he told uh, no longer, no longer beer or no longer uh, smoke in this, uh, like that he told. Uh, but uh, without that, people uh, were a bit uh, jittery, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, but how to make them to there, then they told, okay, peanuts were given, okay. Whenever you feel like smoke, you take the peanuts, okay. With that, you go. So, when this going on, that mission succeeded. So, fifth mission succeeded along with the peanuts, okay. So, then that's subsequently, <laughs> subsequently all subsequent missions of NASA, whenever it is gone, uh, the, that particular day, uh, peanuts should be served to the people, okay. So, he, 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 they sent me this, please you serve your people to that, so that your mission succeed. So, when really succeeded, you told my peanut thing is <laughs> Just some jelly job here. <laughs> Dr. Anadur, thanks for, for sharing and I think also what you've achieved is not only good for India but for the rest of the world too, so we're all going to benefit from that. <laughs> thanks for that. Um, the MAVEN mission was like nine times more expensive than the Mangalian and, uh, and I guess it's not only about peanuts, but how, what is the single cost item, the biggest single cost item actually that made this difference that you could achieve that with such a budget? Yeah, yeah, major thing is, yes, he told the PSLV. So, PS, uh, our, our, among the launch vehicles, among the launch vehicles, our the PSLV, because basically the launch vehicle uh, is the one which uh, takes the bigger mass and puts it into the orbit and to acquire the velocity requirement for that. Okay, now our thing is initial velocity, what's supposed to go, we have brought down to a level. Subsequently, we will acquire like that. So, because of that, we are able to go with the launch vehicle, smaller launch vehicle. Okay, uh, the, the, the bigger the, uh, if you ask for the directly you have to throw, so bigger mass you have to throw, bigger velocity you have to throw. So, then it calls for a heavier launch vehicle. So, uh, first and foremost, heavy launch vehicle we did not take, point one. Second thing is uh, the, uh, the satellite whatever we are making is the basically with available hardwares, with another experiment we did actually as we told, another experiment is a part of a mission mangal what we did is. Originally, the mission was supposed to have the follow-up mission for Chandrayaan. Chandrayaan succeeded. Chandrayaan 2 we are supposed to make. That time we are making the hardware to go to the moon, okay. But that hardware, redundant hardware, whatever available, that hardware we are trying to put it here. So, that way nobody has done that. Nobody, people will tailor make the satellite to make, that's what guys spacecraft. Spacecraft will be crafted for that mission. But now a hardware which is supposed to go to the moon, now we have reconfigured the way in which you configuration to your assembly, we have done that way. So, that way, th there is no nothing called new development called for. 
that means a thing so beyond all the things everywhere when we are going a new mission they will go something called four model configuration one verification model functional verification model then they go for the one engineering model then go for the qualification model then flight model will go this one only will fly that means four times people will do it but we didn't do that even the first time also with the redundant hardware so that's a satellite point of view launch vehicle is simple hardware then beyond that as i told our salary is also less <laughs> All, 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 all things put together. <laughs> <laughs> what, what a great story and what a cool career you've had. Um, you talked a little bit in your presentation about collaboration with other countries over yeah. the decades. Yeah. When you look into the future, how do you see, especially given the current economic environment, the geopolitical environment, how do you see that collaboration continuing and changing? Yeah, but now you look at here, uh, the one thing is uh, basically for the back to the moon is uh, another way it's going on. So there the idea is uh, even for the, uh, the space station, international space station uh, is getting aged. A new one has to come. And to the international space station, you look at here, the way in which things are happening. Uh, today, India is not a part of the international space station. Then in a, a forum, I told when you are making next uh, international space station, leaving in India and China, if you tell it's not called international space station. <laughs> okay. okay. So you, 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 that, that, that means you have to make something. But the lessons learned also you have to go there. The idea is once again, let us not make the same mistake. Every 10 years you make one station. Let us not do. Why can't you do once for all in the moon? When we do it, let us do it together. India also can be part of it. China also can be part of it. We can, so as a scientist in the moon, we can work together. Okay. Is it possible to use that mission also? Another signature mission. Let us not make the boundaries, at least in the moon. Let us work together so that our common wisdom prevails. So today, International Space Station, when after shuttle failure, US was struggling how to get the people back and put there. You know, when the Ukraine war came, what will happen to the American astronauts? Big question mark goes there. Big question mark. Okay. One, only Russia only could send the supply. Leave alone the people. Even supply. Supply every year, 100 tons of fuel has to go to the station. If not go, it will fall. It will keep, keep on coming down. So this, technically, this model is not correct. Technically, moon is possible to do that. You know, water also is available now that we can do. So another uh, thing is, uh, you, you, you can, so in spite of this Ukraine war, American astronauts were saved by the U, uh, Russian uh, thing. So that means uh, the people can think slightly wisely from the space domain. Let us take that also into that. So that way, uh, I thought uh, we, we, in the future, moon can play a major role where the internationally everybody working together, mm. point one. Point two is point of view, as I told here. Now, the, now, for example, more and more India's missions are regional, but India also going to global. Communication missions, things like that are happening. So that means uh, when connectivity of Indian systems over India, we can do our satellites. Our satellites can work for others also. Similarly, other satellites can work here also. So that means the satellites which will cover like a web across the world, can serve everybody in every way. So if you make fragment the people, then it will create a problem. So, so I, I feel uh, the space should play very, very responsible way. My feeling is space people can somehow, we can make the people to teach the political mindset also. <laughs> <laughs> it's required. I think it's the need of the hour. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Any other questions, colleagues? Nitin, Ishuran, any colleague, any questions? So, Romal, I think we're done with Q&A. I think it's over to you to say a few closing remarks. And we can just uh, facilitate uh, Dr. Anadurai as well. And then we leave for high tea. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Anadurai. I think it was really nice of you to spend time, talk about things, and um, and I don't know, some, you know, there are a few things that you caught attention or not when he said his humble beginnings, that his, his classroom was in a cow shed. That's where the cows were there. And then they would take the cows out 
and then they would teach and in the night the cows would come back all right so it's it's those kind of things to say from where and he mentioned also i think in one of those uh, videos that uh, you know he didn't speak english for many years right his his i think his native tongue was tamil uh, right so to come from adversity and and i thank you very much i think uh, great pearls of wisdom uh, extremely proud of the organization that you were and extremely proud of your achievements as well uh, just fantastic to hear and we in deroit also keep trying to do certain things uh, trying to make an impact uh, in our country in all countries we try to make an impact as well societally though we are a professional services organization we we try our best as well but uh, thank you for inspiring us so and thank you for taking the time out we are all here so we can uh, try and see how we fit together and have a a photo with uh, dr anadurai